Okay, I'm back. The Eagles totally kicked butt. I think it was like 30 to 3 or something. Anywho, I've traced on now the little arms on each of the angels. I just did the same thing. I held my tracing over there, put the carbon paper underneath, and traced that on. I also erased the tracing lines around the head. We're going to base in the, um, the head and the hands. Well, actually, let's do the little um, critters first. There's a chicken. Actually, we can do the hands on that. The snowman I'm going to do with the light buttermilk. And the heart we're going to do with um, the light color, the pink sachet. Oops, whatever was the... Whatever the light pink color you used for the um, the heart initially, we're going to do our little heart on this one with that. And I'm just using a round brush. Let's see. I think I'll use a little smaller round brush. This is, I think, a number two round. Let's get this snowman. So I'm just going to base in two little circles because there's hands on here too, but it's just easier to put the hands on after the, uh, after you get the snowman. It's harder to paint around little things like that. So it's just easier to paint a bigger, um, like for the heart, let's see. Maybe I will go around the hands, but I don't know. Let's see. I put them on, but I'm going to put... Um, I think I'm going to go right over them. It's just easier to add them back on after. So I'm going to paint right over those. Maybe I'll go around one and I'll paint right over this one. Easy peasy. I like saying easy peasy. Okay, so that's that. And what's the other guy? The other guy is holding a chicken. Some type of a chicken. Right here. And I'm going to put his tail feathers on and his wing with the darker color that I used to shade him with. But for right now, I'm just going to put him in with the lighter color. So that's basically his body. His little beak's going to be over here and his little tail feathers will be over there. And we're going to use mocha. Mocha's a good flesh color. I have flesh tone because I just do, but mocha's a good Caucasian flesh tone. It's not really pale and it's not really dark. It's kind of a middle. And look at this head. I just, these heads are the weirdest shaped heads, but um, they remind me of the Rugrats. When my kids were little, there used to be a cartoon that was called the Rugrats, and they had big heads. Well, they were babies, but with big heads. I'm just making it because we're going to put hair on here and it's going to get covered up. I can do the little hands on this one since they're not... Uh, we're going to erase all these tracing lines and actually everything gets outlined with black. This is the head that really looks weird. I don't know. I'm going to have to straighten this out. Right here. I don't like that I put that paper underneath that part of the head because you will be able to see that um, little groove there where the paper is, but I had to change the shape a little bit. It just was too wonky. And I'm going to give her a neck. She has a pretty wide neck because I cut the, it's just the way I cut the paper. But it'll be fine. 
I like that better. And then here's my third one. And it's nice when you can work on a piece three at a time like this because um, you're using all the same colors, so it, it's good. You just have all the colors out on your palette and you just keep switching around. And I pretty much have done all three of these with the same brush too. I just you can just use a little round brush and do the whole entire piece. I'm gonna give her a fat neck too. It'll it'll look better once her hair gets on there. You can always tweak the design to your liking. It's not set in stone that it has to be that way. I mean, I might as well put this hand on because we're going to add the the sleeves are just going to be shaded and that's how you'll differentiate that. I'm going to put the other one in a minute. I like to have q-tips handy too. When you don't like something you can always just take a q-tip and it comes right off. It's a very handy little tool to have. I'm going to do another coat on my um, I almost called it a ghost. My snowman, my little snowman. Two coats should be fine because we're going to shade him a little bit too. Put a little carrot nose and um, that's about it. I'll put our hands on there in a minute. Uh, the heart can probably get a second coat as well. So you just keep moving from um, ornament to ornament, from shape to shape, and just because this is dry enough now, because I'm using thin sheer coats of paint, it doesn't take them very long to dry. And uh, so you can come by the time you've finished doing the other two, you can pretty much come back and put another coat, which is awesome. I'm impatient. I like things to move along. I don't want to wait for things to dry necessarily. Alright, so where are we? Let's see. Look how cute they are though, guys. I mean, that's going to be so cute. So see what I mean? Like, you're not going to see the head. It's going to look cute. Cute, cute, cute. All right. Let's see. I think I need to do another coat just because of that, the way the paper is. And you know what? We never shaded our wings. So we're going to go back. It's, I'm going to put a little more flesh color on this. Uh, and you know what? I think I'll add the hands too. Because my snowman's good. But I want to do another coat make sure it's covered with the wing there a piece of paper and that was my mistake I just wasn't being careful when I put the paper down because I could have cut it or I should have looked at the angle but it'll be fine uh, all of these guys could actually use eh, they'll be fine let me see this one maybe a little bit That was really... I think Kirby's upstairs, Joe. Oh, yeah? Did you just hear that? No. I heard a clunk. Like she knocked a trash can over or something. Um, I'm filming now. Just FYI, babe. Okay. So, let's get to the next step. The next thing we're going to do is the finish the wings. Let's finish them up. So in the directions, if you go here to page two, I think it is. Yep, right here, page two. It says, apply a coat of matte medium, blah, 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 base over the wings with a wash of light buttermilk. Then on page three, it says, shade with blue chiffon, highlight with warm white. 
deepen shading with Prussian blue. So I'm just going to go in with the Prussian blue. I'm not going to do the double um, float because I'm a heavy hand and Prussian blue is a pretty dark color. So do you hear that thumping, Joe? No. I'll check her. I'll call her. I think, I think she's doing something. Come. I think she is. Come. Yep. What are you doing? She was upstairs. She's in big trouble. So I'm floating, guys. What are you doing? So she's 11 pounds. She can't cause too much damage. But see, I really want to walk away from this. I don't want to be in all that color because I want this to be gentle. I don't want it to be too. And then look at your picture and see where the shading is. Now on this particular one, she's put the shading along the edges. So I'm going to try and be in the picture. Put the color to the left side of this wing and go like that. I'm going to get a little more water on my brush and I'm just going right back into here and loading my brush because there's plenty of paint right there. A little too much water so I blotted because you can see the water bubbles when you don't when you do that. And then I'm going to go along this side. All the bristles on the surface and by the time you get to the top you're kind of running out of water on the brush. So it starts to it doesn't move as easily um, I kind of like that I could I should put a little bit um, next to her face because it would be shadow um, next to her face well on the wing it would be okay so I'm gonna just stick it right at her neck and go right along her face and the same thing on the other side And that's it. And then it's said to highlight um, with warm white. And I'm going to do that with a float as well. I do want to do some, see she would do it with a dry brush, I'm, prob I'm sure, and do it with a, but I only have one, well I have two, but this one's, you know what, I'll use my big one. I'll do it with a dry brush technique. So I'm going to take this, really, she said warm white, I'm just going to use the, um, white buttermilk. This is a, it's called the Silver Cold Dry Bl Blending and it's by Debbie Cole and I love, these are my favorite dry, um, what are they called? Uh, dry brush, yeah, dry brushing, right? Isn't that what she calls it? Sorry, um, I lost my technical term for it. I'm pretty sure it's called dry brushing, yeah. I'm going to take the tip of it and dip it in the paint. Then I'm going to pounce a little bit and then I'm going to wipe it off. So I'm going to grab a paper towel and kind of get the paint off, but there's still some on there. Then I'm just going to scrub some white in the middle. And I'm not the best at it, but it definitely has the effect. I think it's a little too wet, my brush. Like I didn't get it dry enough because the paint is wet. You see what I'm saying? But you can definitely see the highlight. And this is going to get covered with um, stickles anyway. All right, so that's that. Now we're going to take, do the same technique to all these and let's see where the shading is. So I'm using my picture, remember? I always use my picture as a reference to see where the shading is. Otherwise, I just put it where I think it should go. So I have a Water, blot, corner load. Go back over here and start working the paint into the bristles. And I'm going to go, we're going to create a little, oh, I'm trying to go along the bottom edge of the wing on both sides. I'm just letting that dry a little bit because I want to make another line. Take the mop and I'll just push it back if I can. Because I'm going to do another line where the wings split like a butterfly wing. 
you'll see. So like on here, see how there's the split there? So I'm going to shade along that line too, on the top of it. So let's see, I'm looking at the picture just to get a reference. Um, the bottom one is on top of the back one, so it curves like this. And like this. And I can see that, but it'll definitely be more um, distinct when we outline it and all that stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my other one before I put the highlight on them. We'll just do both of them. And so again, I'm just looking at the picture for a reference to see what, uh, again, the, the bottom wing is the more forward wing. So try and make it look like it's in front of that one. Something like that. Oh, and I guess I was supposed to go along the bottom too. Something like that. These wings are a little wonky, so that's it, right? All three? Okay. So now I'm going to grab that, try to get a little dry brushing highlight again. I just loaded it, and I'm just going to take this dry paper towel and take off most of the paint and only leave a little bit. And hopefully this is dry enough. And just scrub a little light buttermilk on there. Because I would float it. That's the way I highlight. I use floats. So let me show you what I what I would do. Um, I would take, well, I need more. The same brush I just was using to do all that. It's a 5 eighths, I think, inch angle brush. I can't read it anymore. The numbers aren't there. Light buttermilk. And I would just pop some on the top of each wing. I just get a better result because I know how to do that. So it's just when you get used to the certain techniques and I, they just work for me so I can really bring things to life with that technique so that's why it's my go-to. See, I totally just highlighted those wings. And this one I did the dry brushing, but I'll just show you. It's so much brighter when I use the, the floating technique. And this one's a weird shape, so I don't know that I needed it as much. Yeah, it looks good. All right, so now we are going to... I think that's it. It said to darken with Prussian blue, so those are done. The, wi the wings are done. We're going to move to, um, for some reason, my desk just gets smaller and smaller. Um, looking for my eraser. <laughs> Hi, Kirby. What were you doing up there? Here it is. I just want to take off. There's a little bit of a... Because when I put a float on top of here, if I cover the, the lines with paint, you won't be able to erase them as much. So I like to get... When they're this dark, I do like to erase them down to a, a thinnish line. Because once I've put paint on top of the lines, they won't... It can't erase it as easily or I'll be taken off the paint along with it so and I can still see I hope you guys can still see one thing I didn't do though I want to shade my snowman I'm gonna use this uh, Indian turquoise which is the shading color this might be a little dark I could probably use let me see what I used on here I'm going to try and be real subtle, but you can see that shading on him. It's a little blue shade. I'm going to try and be really, really light touch. Just try and only 
tiny bit of paint. So I'm going to be shading this little snowman. Tiny bit of paint and I'm walking away from it. I don't want too much on my brush. Right uh, on top of his head and under his neck. So I'm going to make it look like his top, the top snowball is the, the round one. And tuck it under so you can see that, right? And then I think we're good. Now we can move to um, shading the blue on the dress. So the same color. I'm going to use the same brush and same technique. So I'm corner loading work the paint into the bristles. It's a little bit wet. When you see all those water bubbles, it's a little bit wet, but I prefer that to dry. Then I'm going to take this and go around the outside of the sleeve. And I may want to switch to a darker color. I'm not sure. I think that's what I used on the first one, so I'm going to go with it, continue. I want to go around the heart too, I don't want to go on top of the heart. Yeah, you can see it. I think I was a little too gentle with the first side. Darken it up a little bit. You can always use your mop to kind of tickle it. And then I'm going to go on top of the heart on her chest. And again, refer to your picture. Since you have one, it's awesome. That's what I used to love about having a pattern. Because the, the creator of the design leaves nothing to the imagination. They really help you so much. And pretty soon you kind of know where you need to shade, but it is handy to have it when you are first beginning. So now you can kind of see the shape of the arms, right? And I could do a little along this side and up this side. Doesn't really need it, but... Um, and actually on the sleeve, up at the top where the shoulders would be. But this is just a cute little ornament. It's not, you know, you don't have to, have to, have to be perfect. Now we're going to go around the... I'm going to use this antique mauve to go around the heart. Actually, I think we want to put stripes first, so I'm going to use my thinnest brush. I have a, this is a number one liner. My other liner, I guess I'll use this one. This is a number 20 slash zero. I'm going to make a really inky puddle out of this antique white. Try to get it real wet and so it moves off this like ink. And we're just going to look at your pattern, and there are little stripes across this heart. So I'm going to put little stripes. And you could trace these on if you really need to, but I, I like to wing it a lot because then you're not stuck by the pattern, and or I don't know. But So can you see that? Yep, I got little... Um, what else was I going to do? All right, now we got to let that sit for a minute because I want to let that dry. I can add the other hand. However, my mocha dried up. What else? We're going to add the hair. I think she start she needs hair because she's looking crazy with that head like that. So all you, all the hair is is and you could have traced that on too. But I'm just going to do it. You know, I'm going to wing it. Uh, somehow, I don't know where my, here it is, my little round brush. 
and this is burnt sienna just getting it wet so it'll move and I'm gonna create a little hairdo uh, if you want to get fancy and make your own kind of hairdos go ahead make a bun or pigtails or curls I'm just following the pattern and that way I don't have to think or anything. She has a bald spot. You can fix the head shape if you're not crazy about it. You can you know, do whatever you want. So she now she's got hair. She's looking a little bit better. And we're going to highlight and shade that in a minute. Give everybody see her face needs somehow I got I think I got the shading color on her face. Everybody gets the same color hair, so it's super easy. Or you could make everybody different color hair. A red head, a brunette, and a black hair. And then, you know, give them to people respectively that way, right? If you want to. Or I just made them all match. And it's just easier. Don't need any more colors. And... What else? Um, it got cool out today in New Jersey. It was probably like 75 for a high. And we're, we're, we've been close to 90 like all summer. So it was a beautiful change. So yeah, I have to go over that little part of the face again. I don't like it right here. Hey, Curb. Stop it. She hears things. You're crazy. Oh, and I got to give her hands on this one. This one doesn't have hands, so I'm going to put a hand right here. <clears throat> and one right here. Easy peasy. And then we're going to, like I said, shade around her arms with the mauve, the antique mauve. So I put a little bit of that. And same, my angle brush, my little angle brush. I'm going to corner load. <clears throat> Try to show you how I do that. A little bit of paint. Work it into the bristles. That was way too much water. Try not to put too much paint because I just tend to do that. All the bristles on the surface. And follow that line around with the color on her dress, not on the arm. I like it. Everything's going to get outlined, so don't worry if you're if you go over the line a little, or get your Q-tip out and you can just wipe it away. And then we're going to go around his little head, the little snowman's head, on her chest. <clears throat> Try to. Don't forget your mop if you feel like you got it in a little area that was... And your Q-tip, because I see a little pink on his head. Straighten the head back out. That looks pretty good. I want to put a little bit down the sides of her dress. Like right here. And up here. And 
kind of want to go down the side of her arm. Look at my brush. It's a mess. All right. Um. I think I want to shade around this one again. I don't think the uh, antique gold was a deep enough color. I have some raw sienna out here, I think. No, I don't. Yes, I do. I just want to see if this looks better. I want it to be soft and a glow, but I want it to show up like there's a different... I think I like it better. It's a little darker. Don't forget to turn the piece as well. You don't have to paint it straight on. Turn it so that you can pull the color where you want it and your hand is more comfortable. I constantly turn the piece. It's, it's really fun to work on a small piece because you can absolutely move it where you want it. So that looks better. Um, what else? We're getting there. We're almost to some details. I'm going to shade with the same color, the antique mauve. I am going to take, well, see, I was, all right, yeah, I'm going back to the antique mauve and I'm going to do this little birdie. I'm going to do him on his belly. And we're going to also do the heart kind of, I think, to the left, let's say, on here I did it mainly just like wherever it's touching um, the sleeves and stuff, so I'll show you. I'm going to go down this sleeve, around the hand, and behind it, and I should probably wait because that's wet, but along this oops, side of the sleeve and there's going to be another hand right here but I gotta put that in there. Just going to take the mop and kind of that looks okay. I got a little too much red on my arm sleeve and then I have to put some another hand in here. That's a fat little hand. A little chubby hand. I wanted to touch up another face, this one. So basically now you're just going from piece to piece and hitting it here and there with whatever it needs. Uh, those hands need a second coat. And these are good. We can go around her dress with, I'm going to use the burnt, I mean, I'm sorry, the raw sienna that I just used on the yellow star. I'm going to shade her dress with that. I think it's just going to stand out better. So with the raw sienna, I'm just loading the brush the same way, pushing the paint into the bristles. And then I put the paint up against the sleeve, all the bristles touching the surface, and just slide it along that line. And then when you want to turn, you turn the piece and pull the paint along the line. I'm just going to tuck it right there for now because I kind of ran out of water. Just tickle it out a little bit. I'm going to go... I want to go on her chest, but I'm not sure if I want to go above 
Or let's see what I did on the other one. Aha. Uh -huh. Let's just go on up against this sleeve. All the bristles on the surface. And just tuck it right there. I'm gonna go on top of the chicken. So I'm gonna start at the sleeve. Turn. I could have done this all in um, three three different floats, but I just did it in one. And she should have a little bit on the bottom up against the base of the birdhouse. So I'm going to take and just put the color right up against the base. All the bristles touching the surface because you need the water to pull it along. Uh, a little bit on her shoulders. I just saw on Facebook that um, Deb Antonick has Antonic. Uh, she has two pieces that she's teaching at a um, convention in Canada that are very mixed media oriented. One's like a little Halloween one and one's a snowman and they both have mixed media backgrounds and they're and then they're painted on top of a mixed media background and I made a comment um, that I hope she makes those available after. Sometimes the artist only they don't make the patterns available of um, things that they do at convention they it's like a special thing if you go to convention you get to take that class but I I see some artists are starting to create patterns that are having mixed media in them so kind of like we did with the wings here and using different mediums like uh, matte medium or snow tech or whatever it might be. She didn't use snow tech it turns out. I thought she did to make it look like snow. This is just white paint with um she actually uses some type of glitter. It's called I took my pattern apart. It's called um Deco Art Glamour Dust. So I haven't ever tried that but I think DecoArt is the media, DecoArt media paints and stuff like that, is really leading the way with um, the mixed media, bringing mixed media to the decorative painting world. So, I don't know, I'm looking forward to seeing what the artists are going to do with, with it. And some may just stick to their old styles, and some may try... Um, and mix it up a little bit which I'm hoping for because it definitely brings something new to it um, I've painted for years and I still I, I just love to learn something new and try new things and new new mediums yeah I'm good I'm using what I have but um, I'll add stuff I'll add new things here and there all right so they're looking good. You know what? While we have that darker, what is it, antique mauve, I just want to put the hearts on here too. These three little hearts. See, like, you really didn't have to trace them. You know what, what's good about tracing them, though? Mine always grow hearts, circles, stuff like that, I can't keep them small. So if you have a little tracing one here, that really helps me keep it small because I they would be huge. I'll show you the difference on, with the original piece that I just did of how big my hearts are on that one. I mean, they're actually not bad, but I like them. I like the size. They're just little. Um, what else did I want to do? So, I think we're ready to... See, I could go around her outfit with the Prussian blue. But I kind of like it with the light. I think we're good. So we put the stripes on the heart. We need to um, decorate their clothing. And finish our 
little birdie and finish our snowman. Okay, so for the heart, she has these little tiny dots and you could just use, see I want them to be kind of washed out so I'm going to use the antique white again, or it's actually not, it's light buttermilk. It's a little bit washy, but more of an inky on a liner brush. So I don't want them to be like these dots. I'm, I'm not going for this solid of a dot. I'm going for these, which are like subtle background dots on her fabric. So I'm just going to go one, two, three, and just make a random pattern or not a, a random pattern. I'm going in threes and I'm just putting little groups of three every here and there on her little dress. So it looks like it has a little bit of a pattern to it. If you miss a spot or two, that's okay because, you know, it makes it look more dimensional, like she's turned or the fabric got turned. So that's that. I'm going to set that aside. And then for this one, she has little X's. And I'm going to do them in... I want them to be... I'm going to do the antique gold. I was going to use the raw sienna, I mean the burnt sienna. But I don't want them to be that dark. These were like really dark. So I think I'm going to go for... A little bit of a lesser. I want them to be background. So let's do that. Little tiny X's. The smaller. Yeah, they're not really. Yeah, they're showing up. I mean, maybe not as well for you, but I can see them. And. Here and there, you don't, and you know, we might have wanted to put these on before we shaded because then they even get more um, included in the background. So this, they kind of look like they're sitting on top, but it's fine. It is not realistic. It's a little ornament, and I think she's adorable. So she's got a little pattern on her dress, and then the little star gets stripes, so I'm going to go back to that really teeny tiny liner and the, the light buttermilk again and make just, okay, so on the sleeves I'm going to follow the, the shape of the sleeve and The reason I can make a lot of stripes at one time is because my paint is very watery. It's, it's not just straight out of the bottle because it wouldn't flow if it were. Um, so now I'm just going to add some stripes going straight down. And if they skip like that, that's good. You don't, they don't have to be continuous. Just a hint of a stripe will be fine. And if some are darker than others, that's good too. What's up, babe? Oh, okay, you can just set it over there. So she's got stripes on her dress. What else? I think we need to finish up their little faces, right? So let's get to go back to the directions and see. All right. Head and hands, base coat with mocha, shade with burnt sienna, highlight the chin and fingertips with light buttermilk. So we're going to shade and highlight our little faces and hands. So burnt sienna, I love this color. That's actually the color we used for the hair. So we're going to take that on. I am going to use my good old angle brush. I'm just going to flip this around so I can use this end corner load and we're going to go under her chin and up under her hair so I'll show you. I'm going to give her a little neckline here and then up under here and this should be very sheer 
not real dark. I was very happy with my with the ones I did first. So let's see how this looks. It's not bad. I'm, I'm pretty good. I'm good with that. It's not too dark. And then up against the sleeve on her hands. So on the hand, up against the sleeve. So see, already it gives her dimension. So fun when it starts to come together. I'm a details person. I love it when I get to the details. That's my favorite part because they come to life. So we're going to do under her chin first with the color up under her chin on the neck and then along the hairline. Gently, just softly. More water than paint and you can always push it back a little bit. I'm going to go under her chin again because it didn't really take. There we go. Cute. Oh, her hands. One hand is kind of uh, on top of the other on mine. So I'm going to try and first go up against the sleeves. That's really plenty. That's all you need to do. That's all I'm going to do. Did her. Where's my last one over here? Um, she has a neck. I gave all my girls necks. It's just a little one, but I'm going to put a little shading under her chin. And you can just kind of start at the top and work your way across, too. That's a good way, although you can see I'm very good at shading that way, but I want to knock it back. Then we're going to get some up against the sleeve here and up against the sleeve there. And that's a little dark. But we're going to highlight too. So we're going to take that light buttermilk, same brush, and on the chin and fingertips, I'm going to corner load into light buttermilk, load my brush, and just put a little bit along the chin and on the fingertips right there. My brush is hideous. My brush is really, really um, dead. It's like so frayed and I don't know what happened to my television. But the uh, I, I just ordered another one and I'm gonna order some Robert Simmons brushes too because I just does, I need some good guys if you can invest in good brushes it's a good idea they're really in this case the better the brushes the better chance you'll have of being successful because you can't use those uh, straw type brushes that you see some painters using if you're doing mixed media and you're just kind of um, you don't mind texture and all that stuff that's one thing but this type of painting isn't what that type of painting is this is different you need a brush that's going to be able to make a smooth uh, mark on your paper on your piece sorry it's getting late I'm losing my words um, what else uh we need little pink cheeks. So I saved this brush to do some pink. And I'm going to use the color that we actually base coated with. So the lighter pink, which mine's pink sachet, or sachet pink. And I think this puddle, it's dry, but I might be able to get a little wet paint out of it. And then I'm going to, nah, it wasn't wet enough. Just let me get a little bit of that. And so I'm just going to take and get a little bit of paint. Then you kind of bounce, pounce it into the bristles. Then you're taking a dry paper towel and you're rubbing it off. And then we're going to gently scrub a little bit of that color on her cheeks. Take your time and don't push too hard. Just gently be consistent 
And I mean, she's, I don't know if that's the best color, but I can see pink. I think I need a little darker color. Hmm, what color did I use? I might try the antique mauve. It might be too dark. But if we brush it off and are just subtle and patient, I think it's going to show up better. I'm getting a little bit on the hair, but that's fine because we're going to go over it. I can see that. It's really subtle. I kind of want it darker. So you're going to have to play with what you like, what your uh, idea of a rosy cheek would be. Let me go to a different one. See, that showed up right away. Can you see that? And this one. Dry brushing is a technique that takes time. You have to be patient, which is not my thing, and be careful because if you have too much moisture in the brush, you get a bad result. And it doesn't look dry. It looks like you dug a hole. So I'm going to stop. I'm just going to go over my hair a little and pull off that color there, but I think we did good. So we have three rosy cheeks. i got to turn my fan on again. I'm getting hot again. All right, we're in the home stretch. Uh, let's see what the directions say. Follow the directions. Um, so for the star ornament, we did the dress, and it says to dry brush with pink chiffon. So I am going to actually use that same brush that I just had because I did not put it in water, and I'm going to use... See, I want to use the light buttermilk. I'm just going to use light buttermilk, so I'm using the other brush, the other dry brush that I had, and I'm going to use dry butter, um, light buttermilk. This is what I did on the other ones. I'll show you. So if you look on here, you can see a little bit of like white dry brush on the sleeves, on the dress. Uh, on the sleeves mostly. It's there, but I like the white better. It just, it's going to show up rather than switching colors. So I'm loading this with a good amount of light buttermilk because I want to try and do all three of these girls. But I'm taking it off, pouncing it off, and now I'm going to try and gently It really does look cool when you do it right. The way that the wood kind of grabs the dry, the dry paint. I can see it. I don't know if you guys can see it, but I definitely highlighted. And I wish this was the smaller brush, so I might have a little more control. But these uh, Debbie Cole dry brush blending brushes are so good. They're so good. So I'm going to try and continue with the same brush, with the same paint load. See, if, see now I'm scrubbing harder. I need, to, I need to add more paint. So I'm just going to, again, go right into the wet paint, pounce it, like kind of push it into the bristles. Then I'm going to pounce it on a dry paper towel and brush some of the, just get the bristles dry again, but there's still paint on there. And then just gently, gently. So I'm not putting a ton of pressure when I push down onto the. It is working. It's such a good feeling when you get the technique to work. I can totally see that. I can see that a lot. And I did her. We got to do the blue, which I think I might need to reload, but let's just try it. See, because I'll start scrubbing way too hard and instead of reloading, um, which actually I think it looks good. I think we're good. 
I think I'm good. All right. So that was for highlight the sleeves with a float of pink chiffon. So see right here, I'm going to do I'm doing it all with light buttermilk. So I'm going to just float the light buttermilk on the tips of the sleeves on all the girls. So right here. And maybe a little at her collar. Just to brighten it up up there. And I just get my mop. But I think that looks good. And maybe a little bit on the top of the heart. I don't know. Why not, right? Cute. Got this one. So again, the same thing. I'm just going to do it right at the edge of the sleeve. Right here. And turn your piece so that you're comfortable with where your brush is. Always have your brush, the paint pointing in the right direction. How about up against her little collar too. We got to do our birdie. Highlight the birdie's back. We got to add his beak. Uh, what else? Everybody else is looking good. I think we're good. So the bird needs the bird needs to get finished, and he's pretty good. That she put a little um, ribbon around the snowman's neck. I didn't put it on mine. I think it looks cute without it, and it, I just didn't feel like messing around. So I'm doing light buttermilk right along the sleeve here. Uh, And up at her collar too. And I like it. It's getting there. She's getting cuter and cuter. Um, we didn't shade our hair. We're going to shade the hair with burnt umber. I have that out here. And we're going to shade along the bottom and we're going to highlight with it's like this orange color I'm going to use dark goldenrod because I want to make the snowman's nose with it it's like an orangey color but really I mean it's just a highlight color for her um, hair so we're going to shade her hair along the bottom so I'm going to go one two three I'm going to go all three of them and by the time I get back to the first one we can hot we can start highlighting so we're going to go along the bottom edge so the front the front edge of all three and Does anything else get um, this color? I think I want to wait a second before we highlight, but we can put the little snowman's nose on. I'm just going to use my little liner brush and get some of that goldenrod on here. And I'm going to put it like, start in the center and just make a line down and then widen the top part. And it just looks like a little carrot. Um, that's it. Uh, I kind of want to wait a second for the, um, hair to dry. What else? Oh, the bird. So we're going to take the darker mauve color, the antique mauve, and that little round brush. I'm going to use my number two round. And again, you never want the paint to just be straight from that puddle. I'm going to pull a little, I have water in my bristles already, and I just pull a little bit and load the brush. 
So now there's paint all throughout the brush. It's not just on the tip of the brush. Then I'm going to put three little tail feathers on him. And look at your picture. Look at this nice picture. You see this? So I'm just going to do that. And then I'm going to put a little goldenrod beak on him too that I forgot. And I think I'm going to put two little wing feathers too. So for right now, I'm going to look at my picture and it goes kind of one, two, three, and then there's two little one, two wing feathers right there. Then I'm going to take that little number one round again and get a little more of that goldenrod and make a little triangle right here. Just pull it straight out from along the line here and a little triangle right there. And now he became a bird all of a sudden. And when he gets his eye, he'll even look more birdy. Um, we're going to highlight the hair now because they're dry enough. I'm going to take the angle brush and corner load into that golden rod. Work that into the bristles and see I, I really have a heavy hand so I'm walking away a little bit I don't want all that paint I'm just going to take it along the top edge of the hair on all three of the girls I can go right back into that puddle and reload my brush because I have plenty of water in there and plenty of paint so I just can reload right there and now she's got a little bit of highlight in her hair and I think we're almost ready for the final touches alright so here we are here we are got them um, just going back to my directions. Highlight, deepen shading with cinnamon drop, line the stripes, and add dots with worm weight. Um, yep, I think we're ready for black lines and white dots. We're going to first do our black lines, then we're going to add our halos. The white dots are going to be last because we'll stick our hands in those. So, to make these black lines, we're going to use black paint. We're not going to use a pen. We're going to use paint and a brush. And I'm going to use this little liner brush, which I don't see. It's a 20 slash zero. I prefer my 10 slash zero, but I have to do a trick that I saw. Oh, gosh. Gina Ahrens do. She put all her brushes, her really splayed out brushes like this, in boiling water. And supposedly it fixed them. It looked like it fixed them. But I really need to fix this. It's a great brush, but when I use it, it will split apart. See? Even though it's wet, I end up with two lines instead of one. I would be love to be using that brush, but I'm going to use this little, this one has so few um, bristles. It's just, I don't know, it doesn't hold as much water. And what else? I mean, I could use my number one, but I load, I'm going to use my number one because I want to show you. This holds a lot more water because it's a longer bristle, which I really like. But it also holds a lot more paint, and I can, look, look at all this, see? You can, you can really do a lot with this, because it holds so much. But I don't want to make my lines thick. I really want to make them little. So I'm going to try and really stay up on the tip, and just make outline lines, like really thin outline lines. So that's what you're shooting for. You're just, you just want to outline like you're using a pen. So really get up on the tip of it and use very thin paint, like the consistency of ink. So I'm going to bring in this little girl and we're going to give her hair. So you can kind of just have fun with it. 
Give her a little curl. Follow your picture too, but see how thick that was? I don't necessarily want it that thick. I want it thin. So I'm trying, but it looks cute regardless, so just don't be so hard on yourself, Sarah. I mean, it's cute. I'm going to really try and do the outlining thin, 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 thin. So I'm going to outline my wing. And I like to suggest that you turn the piece and pull the stroke toward you or whatever you feel more comfortable with. Don't force the, the brush to do something that you don't feel comfortable doing. If, if, if the stroke isn't going in the right direction, turn the piece and get readjust it. And I'm going to go ahead and go around her head too. And if you, if it skips, that's okay. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. See, it got a little thicker on me there, but that's okay. And then I'll give them an eye. Uh, get right over top of it if you need to, to make your lines where put your lines where you want them to go because I'm kind of away from the piece because it's under the camera lens and I don't want to stick my head in there so that I you know can see the lines but that's what I would be doing if I so like I don't love that that it's so thick right there but it will look cute regardless I promise it will by the time you put the glitter on it, and it is going to be so cute, I'm telling you. See, look how cute it already looks. That's why I love outlining. I'm just going to grab a little bit of the shading color and try and lessen that mark. Just lessening it. I don't like it, so I tried to lessen it. I got to get a nice inky consistency loading the brush and I'm going to go gently really stand up the brush on the tip to get the thinnest line possible. Um, I'm going to put a couple little strokes here for the wing and just outline these little guys too. And her eyes. I like to make them now if you look at hers, hers are straight dip dots, but I put mine on a little angle and kind of did them like this. They're a little bigger or a little more oval looking and then I'm going to add a highlight dot to that. So look, they look different. I did them both, but they both have their own little personalities. No two are going to be the same even though you use the pattern, you know, um, because they're hand painted. So every single one turns out a little bit different from the other. So we're going to do the same thing with this one and you know what? I'll go away, I'll do all this off camera, and we'll come back and we'll add the next step. Be right back. 